Sandy would be more than delighted to respond to questions via LinkedIn. So, thank you very much for being here. Morning. 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 Um, so I've been asked to talk about my story, my leadership journey, um, and to start at the very beginning. So I'm not going to tell you where I was born or anything like that. I'm just going to start from a very bad council estate and then take you through to where I am today. Um, and I'm going to skip through the early years, focus on the business years, and then give you lots of time for questions at the end. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Okay. So has anybody heard of Telford? Yeah. A few of you. Dreadful place. I didn't realise it was a dreadful place actually until I left. <laughs> until I came up here to Manchester and looked back and thought, oh my god, that was a dreadful place to grow, to grow up. But when you grow up in a place, it's just where you grow up, isn't it? You just don't realise it's good or bad, it's just where you live. Uh, but it was a pretty horrible place and it was a pretty uh, crappy school I went to. Um, and back in when I was your age, I didn't have a clue that there was any such thing as a career. What we got were jobs, if we were lucky. It was just in where I where I was. It was a job. You got a job because you had to pay. You had to you had to buy food and you had to go clubbing at night. And that was all a job was about was giving you money in your pocket. It wasn't until quite late on that I realised it was this magical thing called a career where you could actually enjoy going to work. And I found that completely by accident. And to be honest, most of my career has been based on my propensity to get bored. Who gets bored quick here? Yeah, a lot of you, excellent. Yeah, I do. I get really bored. It's like, right, I've done that, I've learned that, what's next? Um, and that, that's all it's been about, to be honest. And I've absolutely loved my career. I still love what I do now. So very, very lucky. Um, so I was working. Um, uh, there was a thing back in the day that nobody of you remember. It was called the YTS, a youth training scheme. And it was just basically the, the government's way of getting people jobs. They were all made up jobs. They weren't real jobs. And um, I was working for them at the um, Telford Development Corporation, dreadful job. And I then got a job at the uh, British Amateur Gymnastics Association. And that was a fab place to work. It was at Lillishall National Sports Centre where the football academy used to be back in the day. So I had lots of lovely strapping footballs around me, which was always good for a teenager. And I worked very long hours, and I, was do well, I wasn't working very long hours then actually, I was just doing my 9 to 5 job, and I was an administrator. And I actually quite enjoyed being an administrator, it's quite, something quite satisfying being an administrator. And then our membership secretary left, and she, they said, will you take her job? And I was like, no, I don't want, I don't want a promotion, I, no, I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I'm leaving the 5 o'clock at night, getting paid okay, I'm going out. And they were like, will you just do it for now? More. Yeah, okay, I'll do it for now, which meant they didn't even give me a pay rise either. So I did this job, and it was basically, my job was to send badges to our gymnast members all over the country and to get membership uh, monies in, and to try and build the membership. So to try and build the membership, I guess what, I got bored. I started doing things like I made a little magazine, and I created a little character called Freddie Flip Flack, who was a cat who do gymnastics. And I also did a roadshow around um, theme parks across the country, like Elf Towers, because I wanted to go to the theme parks, essentially. Um, and so basically what, ha what started to happen was the membership started to grow. Comple again, completely by accident. And they said to me, well, will you do the marketing of the membership? And I said, I don't know what marketing is. And they said, well, actually, you're doing it already. And I said, no, 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 no. If you want me to do this thing called marketing, you're going to have to send me on a course. So they put me on the Chartered Institute of Marketing Diploma course. And it was literally like the sun coming out from behind a cloud. So all of a sudden, from being a job, I suddenly had this thing called a career where I was actually really enjoying going to work and I was learning all the time. And it, again, completely by accident. And I was meeting brilliant people in college um, and, and basically applying that back in, back in the class, which is exactly what you guys are doing. So you're already way ahead of me. So, they then approached me and said, will you become the marketing manager? I mean, I was probably 22 at this stage, no experience whatsoever. And they said, will you become the marketing manager? By the way, you can keep all of your membership secretary jobs. So by this time, I've got two jobs. Uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I was working from about 7 o'clock in the morning to about 10 o'clock at night, just trying to keep hold of everything that I needed to do. And this is where I learned my first really big life lesson. <coughs> Uh, which was, uh, I, just, I just freaked out one day and I went over my boss's 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 head, which is something you should never do anyway. 
uh, I just happened to like him and he happened to like me and I just said, I can't do so much, killing me. And I don't have a life. And he said, well, stop. Bless you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, stop, don't, don't do it. But if I don't do it, it won't get done. Well, it won't get done then, will it? We're not paying to work 19 hours a day. Stop. So I went, right, fine. Be like that then, I'm stopping. And I literally stopped and I started again working nine to five. And guess what? Anybody? Bored. Bored. Yeah, I got bored, yeah, but that's <laughs> no, the lesson here is that the work still got done. I still managed to get the important things done between nine to five. You don't need to work seven to ten. The work will expand to the time you allow it. That was a really big important life lesson. No matter how much work there is, you, you can always find more time to do it if you let it cut into your life. But actually, if you focus on what's important, you can get the work done more often than not within a, a reasonable day. You don't have to kill yourself. So that was a massive life lesson to, to me. Um, so I then started to think, right, I'm doing all these things. What's the bit I actually really enjoy in my job? And the thing I actually really enjoyed was when I got the gymnasts into the national papers or into the, onto TV and radio. And there was no such thing as Google back in those days. So I couldn't even Google to figure out what that was called. So I started asking around, and what I figured out was that was called PR. Um, so I thought, right, well, maybe I should do PR then rather than marketing because it was too big. And I was also still doing, as I say, the other job. So I applied for a job at, uh, in my local newspaper. It was a job uh, called PR manager at Arga Rayburn, which is a cooker company, you know, the big cast iron cookers. Uh, and I applied, and my husband laughed his head off because he said, you work for a cooker company, you don't even cook. <laughs> like, that's fine, I can market anything. Uh, so I went along, how on earth I blagged this job, I don't know. I didn't have a clue what I was doing in PR. Um, and, and as I said, I didn't cook either, I didn't know anything about cookers. But for some reason they gave me the job, so that was my first job in PR. And I absolutely loved it, and I just made it up as I went along. And I'm still mates with the people in that, that marketing team now, 20 odd years later. Um, but, you know, PR to me was just so interesting, even if I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was learning, I was doing, I was travelling the country, going to shows, I was doing events, I was doing all sorts of things I didn't have a clue about, and just learning and learning. And that's my favourite thing in life, is learning. Um, so, then my husband was transferred up to Manchester, so this is about 23 years ago, and um, he became regional manager of UCI Cinemas at the time, and uh, so we moved up to Manchester, and again, this was an amazing thing for me. At Manchester, literally from my first day in Manchester, I was like, I love this place. Everybody told me it always rains in Manchester well today, obviously. <laughs> but I came 23 years ago, um, and probably some of you were before, but um, there was a drought. There was a, there was a summer of, of sunshine, a whole summer of sunshine in Manchester, you'll never believe it. And it was literally, you couldn't believe it. I kept saying to people, why do people say it's rain in Manchester? On my first day in Manchester, I walked up Market Street and somebody went, morning. I was like, do I know you? Because nobody talks to you in Telford, I can tell you that now. Uh, so I just suddenly thought, well, there's another myth that's, that's that, that myth is actually true that everybody's really friendly in Manchester. And Manchester literally adopted me and I, I, loved, I loved it from the first day and I still love it today. Um, so I was working, I decided I wanted to work in an agency at that stage rather than in house. So do you know the difference between in house and agency? Yes, no? Right, okay. So in-house means you're working at a company like Arga or Amazon or Marks and Spencers. So you're in their PR team and you only do PR for them. In an agency, you work in um, a, an agency that has lots of different clients. So you might work for Amazon, Marks and Spencers and Arga all at the same time. Well, hold on. This is amazing, isn't it? For somebody who gets bored, cha-ching! I've got eight clients and I'm doing eight PR for eight different companies. How cool is that? And actually, what was really even better about the agency that I was working at, it was a crisis management agency. And crisis management is something that you either love or hate, a bit marmite. For my first day again, I ended up doing, with no experience whatsoever, I ended up doing a live, down the line interview on ITN. So I was that disembodied voice you hear at 10 o'clock at night. And I had, no, I had no clue what I was doing. And that, that was this tiny little agency that just threw you right in. And I, I absolutely love that. And I love crisis management. You know, it's one of those things that it gets, it gets your blood going. It really kind of challenges you. And you challenge back with the client. And you really kind of work things out. And you have to...